Music festivals are awesome. You get to see a ton of acts for relatively little money and get to be around tons of like-minded people for a few days. Not everything about these festivals is so great though. What's going on that might hamper your enjoyment of festivals? What makes them still worth going to? Why did the girl who went to the Sweethearts dance with me in 10th grade tell me that she didn't want to dance with me anymore halfway through the event? I'll answer those first two questions here. I'm Luke, this is Stage 76. So a disclaimer, I'm going to primarily be focusing on rock and metal type music festivals in this video since they are what I personally have the most experience with. Music festivals are an enormous opportunity to have a lot of fun and enjoyment over the course of a weekend or more. I just recently went to Incarceration in Mansfield, Ohio, and it was a blast seeing so many bands that I loved for three days straight. At around $200 for more than 60 acts over the entire weekend, it's a pretty insane value. You would probably pretty easily pay over twice that to see every act individually outside of the festival. On the note of there being so many acts, these festivals are potentially a great opportunity for you to see a ton of bands that you like. 60 acts is 60 chances of seeing someone you really want to see. Those are pretty decent odds for you. You won't even have to travel to a bunch of different places to see them all because they're all there in that one place. This is also a potential chance for you to see tons of bands you've never seen before. I have countless stories of becoming a fan of a band because I saw them at a festival. It doesn't even have to be the first time you've seen or heard them. The second time I saw Baby Metal at a festival and heard them play Distortion, my jaw just hit the floor and I've been a fan ever since. There is also the opportunity for a lot of variety. I think a festival is the only place I'm ever going to see Jelly Roll and Lamb of God play on the same bill. I think that's pretty cool. Some people hate it, but personally, I really like it. Also, when I was recording this, I wasn't thinking about festivals that aren't just one general genre. Like at Lollapalooza, you can see Lorna Shore and Doja Cat. That's real. These types of festivals also tend to attract unique acts that you don't normally get to see outside of festivals. In 2021, we saw the Mudbane reunion come exclusively to a few festivals. Adam Gontier premiered his new band, St. Asonia, at Rock on the Range a while back. Jared Dines and Howard Jones will be playing as Scion live for the first time at Blue Ridge Rock Festival in September. Not all of those are super big acts by any stretch, but if you are a fan of any of those bands, or at least the people in them, that's going to have you pretty hyped up. I've said all these really great things about festivals, but at the end of the day, they have the potential to... kind of suck. Why? To explain, I'm going to present you with a sort of worst case scenario. Let's start from the beginning. You have bought your tickets to Festival X. Let's say you're out $200, just like me. That's not too bad, but that's only the starting cost. If you don't live very close to the festival and don't happen to know someone who does, you're going to have to book a hotel for the weekend. You need to make sure you do this as soon as you can because these hotels can end up entirely booked pretty fast. I wasn't sure if I was going to make it to incarceration, so I waited to book a hotel so I didn't waste potentially more money on a hotel room I wouldn't use. By the time I was sure I could go, all the hotels within a reasonable driving distance were entirely booked. Incarceration may be a little bit unique here as it's in Mansfield, Ohio. Mansfield and the surrounding area hotels can't support thousands of people traveling to the area for the festival. The closest cities with adequate lodging would be Columbus and Akron, which would both be around an hour or so drive away. This isn't going to be the case for all fests, but I'm trying to make things as bad as possible right now. Anyway, now you've booked your hotel that's an hour drive away for an additional $200, and I'm being generous with that one. You're driving, so that means you're going to have to park at the venue for an additional fee. For me, this cost was around $88 to prepay for the entire weekend. If I waited until I got there, it would have been even more expensive. So now it's the day of the festival. You're going to have to fill up that vehicle with gas that hopefully lasts you the entire weekend. I'm going to be extremely conservative and say that this will cost you around $40. Now you're traveling to the festival venue and you're trying to get to the parking lot, but the traffic is so backed up 
that you're just waiting in line in the street for some ridiculous amount of time until finally you can get into the parking lot and be directed to a parking space. If you don't arrive early enough, you might end up missing some bands you really want to see due to traffic and parking woes. If you're lucky, this won't be much of a problem though. In this scenario though, now you're later than you wanted to be and you've missed a band that you really wanted to see. Oh well. There's still quite a few more to go in the day's lineup, but oh no, you wanted to see both Poppy and Wage War, but they're playing at the same time on different stages. Now you have to choose, so you're going to miss someone you wanted to see. This is why the number of acts performing at a festival is more like that number with an asterisk. You won't see every act, or if you do, you're going to have to split time between a lot of them, and that's really going to diminish the experience. So let's say you chose one and you missed the other. Oh well, that's the breaks. Now you're thirsty, so you go pay $4 for a water. What's nice is you can refill this water bottle all day for free. What's the problem with that? Oh boy, you're really gonna be waiting to fill that damn bottle of water up. The line for the water fountain is 50 people long and you can't even see a stage from the line. So you can A, wait in line and maybe miss even more music, or B, pay up for some water. It's like a mobile game. Oh, you can totally have some more water for free, you just gotta wait. Or for the low, low price of just $4, you can have that baby right now and be right back in the pit. They are time-gating water behind a paywall. It's real life microtransactions. And you really need this water because it's 90 degrees and there's not a cloud in the sky. So you pay for two more waters throughout the day. Not only are you thirsty, you're hungry too. There's no wait for free food option. There is only wait for expensive food option. You're trying not to spend too much, so you wait behind 20 or so people and miss even more music to finally pay $15 for a plain hamburger. Not a cheeseburger, a hamburger. The cheese DLC costs $5. There's plenty of much better food available, but you're going to be paying even more. Personally, I just straight up don't even eat at these things. I load up on fast food before I get there and have a dinner of convenience store snacks afterward. These are gourmet meals of Nerds gummy clusters and baked Lay's potato chips. Mm. Back to the situation at hand. Since you're drinking so much water, you're going to have to go to the bathroom. And the event didn't order enough porta potties. So now you have to wait in yet another line to go to the bathroom. There are actually two quicker ways out of this situation, although one is going to leave you with wet pants all day and the other might land you in jail. So you wait another few minutes to relieve yourself. Everything else the rest of the day is going pretty well. You see some bands you like and some you don't care about until you finally get to the headliner, Avenge Sevenfold, and you're super excited to see them. Since this is a festival crowd, not an Avenged Sevenfold crowd, they play a set that doesn't go quite as hard into the deep cuts of their catalog. It's still a great set, especially for the more casual fan, but you're left a little disappointed that they didn't play A Little Piece of Heaven. I know they actually did play it in their last festival run, but up until that point, they did not, and they didn't play it at this fictional Festival X either. It's not the end of the world, but it's a little bit of a bummer. They do their encore and you exit the venue. It's a little slow getting out, but not too bad. You walk back to your car and the parking situation is a complete mess. There's one super small exit to the parking lot and the people directing traffic out of the parking lot are doing a horrid job. Someone up the chain didn't account for a few potential bottlenecks in the parking lot. And now you're stuck waiting an hour just to get out. You eventually make it out and drive that hour back to your hotel. You come back for day two and some issues have been solved. Event coordinators managed to make traffic and parking flow much more smoothly. The only real issue today is you're pretty early and it's just a little too cold. You don't want to have to carry an extra layer around with you all day when it gets a little warmer, so you decide to leave your jacket in the car. You're a little shivery at certain points in the day, but overall it's not too bad, because everything else is awesome. 
This is kind of like my second day at the first festival I ever went to. It was a little too cold that day. Luckily, I was in the very front of the main stage all day. Someone threw out can koozies from the stage. I managed to snag two of them and wore them like gloves. That's how much I needed just any amount of relief. What's cool about using those things as gloves is that you can still throw horns. Anyway, back to the fictional situation at hand. Your day three is where things go a bit more downhill. You wake up in your hotel room and it's an absolute downpour. The drive to the festival is not any better. The parking lot is a muddy mess and moving a bit more slowly. You park, exit your car, and head into the venue. You have a poncho, so you'll still stay relatively dry. Your feet will be pretty wet but your upper body is basically all good. The rain never really lets up, so you stand around in the cold rain all day watching a few bands. You're still having a good time, but it certainly could be much better. Suddenly, off in the distance, you see lightning strike. The band currently playing is immediately ordered off the stage, and the attendees have to take shelter. A festival coordinator comes over the PA and tells everyone to go to the proper areas and to check social media for updates. You're sent back to your car. So you sit there for half an hour. You whip out your phone and try to check your socials, but the cell towers are so overloaded from everyone trying to check Instagram for an update that you can't even manage to pull up the festival's page. You keep trying every 15 minutes until it's been an hour. Luck strikes and you manage to refresh the festival's Instagram page and they provided an update. The festival will open back up at 6. Seven bands have been cut from the lineup. Two of those were Hatebreed and Architects, who you were super hyped up to see. So that's a real downer. You wait in your car until 5.30 and the festival provides another update. The reopen time has been pushed to 8. Every band except for the last two, uh, Bring Me the Horizon and Rob Zombie, have been bumped from the lineup. Luckily, there wasn't anyone else in the now nixed set of acts that you really wanted to check out, but you're going to be devastated if you miss those last two bands. 745 finally rolls around. And unfortunately, they aren't opening this puppy back up. The lightning hasn't stopped, and it's not going to stop anytime soon. So, dejected, you slowly exit the parking lot with everyone else and drive home. The event never reimburses you for anything because screw you, buddy. You knew it was a risk. The whole thing is over now, and looking back, it was a pretty cool experience. You saw a bunch of bands you like, but it still kind of sucked because of all those issues I just talked about. You've arrived at a grand total of around $605 after all of the unspoken costs associated with the festival and you didn't even get a t-shirt or any other merchandise. Also, keep in mind that a lot of the costs I've listed here are very, very generous. Parts of this are likely even more expensive in reality. My gripes with festivals don't even end there either. Another potential issue is that if you don't want to go to a festival that's in your relative area, a lot of the time bands are on tour during these festival dates and the festival is part of that tour, often meaning that's the only time they are coming close to you. You'll have to fork out the cash just to go to the festival just to see the band or hope that they come around some other time relatively soon or travel a little farther if you're hardcore enough that it seems worth it to do that. I have all these complaints about these festivals because they really do kind of suck. But most of the time they're really still worth it. A lot of these complaints are potential issues with any live event, so it's really just part of life. As long as you still have the opportunity to see a bunch of cool acts in such a short period of time, it's still a fun experience and some of the little issues here and there add a little character to the experience and can make it all that much more memorable. There was the one Rock on the Range where it was storming through the penultimate act and we were all scared that Metallica wasn't going to be able to close out the festival. Luckily, the weather held off enough that they could. It wasn't the most fun thing ever, but hey, we all still saw Metallica and we all had that story. That's just life. You have to take some bad with all of the good things. Makes those good things seem even better. So festivals do kind of suck, but they are still pretty awesome. I can sit here and talk trash about all the things that might go wrong, but I know if I like the lineup enough, I'm probably still going to go.
Well, that's the end of this one now. Thank you for checking out another one of my videos where I ramble on about concerts and bands and such. I'm Luke. This is Stage 76.